On Wednesday afternoon, a cloud of gloom covered New Vision as the staff learned about the passing on of their beloved colleague, Ketra Kamgasa. Shocking, terrible, sad, unbelievable were some of the words from the members as news started flickering in. Kamgasa breathed her last at 3.30 p.m. at International Hospital Kampala in Namuongo. In minutes, the social media was awash with information about Ketra's demise, with condolences and messages of what people remember about the fashion guru flowing in from various corners of the world. Born on December 8, 1967, Ketra had just celebrated her 50th birthday. She was the third born among the four children of Mr. Stephen Kalege and Mrs. Airosi Kamgasa of Nyakatoke, Rugombe, Mwenge in the present day Chenjojo district. In many of the conferences she addressed, Kamgasa always talked about how her father loved her and told her she was the most beautiful girl the world could ever produce. She always spoke fondly about her father and the whole family she grew up in of over 24 members. She said her first date was with her father. Kamgasa studied her primary at Gayaza Junior, finishing her primary seven in 1981. She proceeded to King's College Budo for all level between 1982 and 1985. In 1986, she joined Makere High School for a level completing in 1988. Kamgasa studied applied sociology at the University of Linchester in England, where she took part in the student politics and was whole representative in the guild. She graduated in 1993. This was not her start in student politics. She had been a house leader at Gayazi Junior, executive committee member at King's College Budo, and executive committee member of the Scripture Union at Makere High School. In March 1994, she came to the New Vision, where she started working as a freelance writer, securing an appointment as permanent staff six years later. She worked as features writer, sub-editor, and education editor until 2004 when she was appointed magazine's editor. As a writer, she covered health, education, gender issues, but most especially fashion, which she covered with passion. Kamgasawa's New Vision is first education editor, where she also became the first Sunday magazine editor before moving to edit Bride and Groom as well as Flair magazines. Here are some of the comments from her social media fans. Immaculate Ayevale said, She has been a social lady ever happy, and I remember when we met in one shopping center. That time they had just put a ban on Bouvera, and she was like, These paper bags look wow in movies, but carrying them in reality is hectic. May her soul rest in peace. Ayevale Chamein says, I knew this lady from the time I was young. I read her flair and bridal magazines. Just like someone said she had fashion right in her head. I one time thought she would be my designer on my wedding, but it is so unfortunate that death has robbed her and it has not happened. R.I.P. my role model, mentor Ketra Kamgasa Lydia. We shall miss you dearly. Iela Simwe says, when I was in senior two, she came and gave us career guidance. And she also taught us girls about esteem and her life experience. I loved her. I will miss her dearly. Bishop Samuel says, I am deeply saddened by the sudden death of Miss Ketura Lydia Kamgasa. I am proud to have known such a kind, warm and brilliant person. My prayers and thoughts are with her and with those she left behind at the New Vision. 
Tugume Ann says, what I remember about her is her humbleness and she has been down to earth in spite of her profile. Joyce Mlindwa says, you have gone so soon, dear. It was the time we needed you the most and is the time you have left us. You are a classmate to my late dear sister at King's College Widow. We shall always miss you. Finally, from Rakijuma Kazoa Vincent, he says, Oh no, it is a pity and great loss to the family, the people of Tor and the whole country. I will surely miss her columns in the paper, especially the fashion police. And this is what her colleagues remember about her. I worked with Ketua for a long time. Time came, we became a friend, and we became even a mother to me. Ketua, she was a, a lovely, loving woman, and she loves God very much. Whenever I meet Ketua, she thank God. She, every time she prays God, I think she thank God. So I loved Ketua, you know, as like my mother. And whatever Ketua was doing to me, Whatever he comes to me, time came and he, he called me to be his firstborn daughter. So whatever I get secretary on the way, I kneel down. Then he laughs. He say, "Oh, my daughter, you have you have good manners." So I, I think I have to buy for a gift. So the following day, she bring for me. If you bring for me thing, you bring for me something. Maybe maybe zigo, eh? a ration, maybe a necklace. May, sometime maybe he has maybe a, a function like a bribe and groom. He makes sure that he bring for me something to please me. To make me happy. Ketra, I think her time had reached her to go. Me, me I just thank God for that. I, in fact, I was hurt, but God gave me spirit. He said, no, your mother, I think his time had come to her to go. So I thank God for, for his life. I thank God. I'm going to miss her. I met her in 2013 when I, when I, when I started working in a magazine section. As a stylist, I have no idea why she's, she thought I could be a stylist, but um, I didn't even know what styling was then. But uh, when I came to magazines, she was my direct supervisor and she told me what styling was. And she never, she, she taught me in a, in a strange way because she never ever uh, went to the field with me but she would tell me what to do where to go and how to do it what i miss about her was her humor she had lots of stories i used to see her around new vision because when i was a freelancer but i didn't know her so well until i joined magazines as a writer i learned so much from her ketura loved fashion she loved fashion she loved dressing up and when I just joined, I joined magazines I never used to like. I would, I would show up in jeans, show up in stuff, like different, and, and she always told me, your image is everything, dress up like this, dress up like that. And she always, each time I dressed differently and looked nice, she would compliment me and tell me, hey, you look nice. Those are nice earrings. Those are, oh, that's a, that's a, it's a nice lipstick you're wearing. So with time I, I grew and I understood that I have to dress up and, and, and look nice, and she really liked fashion. She was very funny and she was creative. Ketura was that person for me who really, for her it was about a whole person. Yeah. And as journalists, for her, she looked at you as not just a person who's going to just be giving out stories, but someone who also has uh, the other potential to do so many other things. and. Trust me, she never ignored you. She had to make sure that you actually become what she actually thought you were or you were able to do. That for me was Petura. And I, it's sad to actually say that uh, she's, actually, she's gone. It's, it's, a, it's a statement that you don't want to actually say because you, you just can't um, come to terms with the fact that she, she's no more. Ketura Kamgasa was my immediate supervisor. Um, I use, I'm the editor of Bread and Room magazine. I've known her as my supervisor, but before that, as a friend. She's been inspirational to me, and when I was in a privileged position to edit her articles as the editor for her vision, she was 
helpful in submitting to me her articles. We're, we're definitely going to miss the color, the humor, because she saw everything in a way that many people wouldn't. And she saw you, she allowed you to see the humor even in a dark situation. And always kept her bright smile, no matter what. And that for us, that for me, I am really, really going to miss so much. Ketura, to me, I'm privileged to have known her as Aunt Ketura. I would call her Aunt Ketura. I thank God so much for bringing her into my life. She has known me like since I was a baby, and I'm so grateful to God for, for that. She would really support me so much. Younger in my studies, or is looking out for me, um, grooming me to be someone who has an excellent spirit. She always emphasized, you know, being a lady, being smart and excellent in whatever you do. She always said you have to look good and not just, you know, looking good physically outside, but even being good inside your spirit, have an excellent spirit, have pure thoughts a clean heart. I thank God so much for her and I know she's in better hands now. She's in the best hands. She's with God and she's happy. Ketura, I love you so much. I know you'll always be in my thoughts and all the things that you've taught me, they'll always be with me and I'll always honor you by living up to all the things that you taught me and having the excellent spirit. It's, it's a very, very sad moment for Aunt Ketura because this came at a time when none of us actually expected it. Uh, it was a real shock. I took long to take it in. I kept thinking it was a bad dream I was having. But well, we hope she's with the Lord now and we will not, she has left a strong legacy. I remember she taught me journalism. One thing I can't forget, I keep telling people, they don't refer to children as kids. She kept telling me, these are not goats. I know it's a double meaning, but she says, no, never refer to children as kids. There is no story I've ever passed with the word kids in it. Uh, but most important is that she engraved the journalism. Now I'm doing, she was once education editor. Now I'm the education editor. I mean, they built what we are running today. She has been a very, very, very special lady. One thing that gives us a bit of hope and a bit of uh, comfort is that we know she's with the Lord. The way she loved the Lord, we know she's with the Lord. And that will comfort us and will give us an opportunity to celebrate our life. I knew Ketura from uh, around 1996 when I started freelancing from, uh, for the New Vision. At the time, she was the education editor. And what I remember of her is that uh, she is a, a good editor who would uh, insist on getting the best quality stories. It was through her guidance and mentoring that I won, I uh, was one of the winners of the Pioneer African Education Journalism Award. She would go out and encourage you to even compete at a continental level, which I found was uh, amazing. Eventually, I succeeded her as a education editor. She remained part of features, and we maintained, she maintained a column in her vision writing about fashion. And as a result of that, I think new vision became one of the first choice um, publication when it comes to reading professional critic of the fashion uh, industry and trends um, uh, and, and trends. She does not take anything that is not of quality. She was very innovative. She would contribute ideas in areas that even did not fall under her beat. Her greatness is exemplified by the number of tweets, discussions on social medias, and the emails we have received, people expressing their sympathy. We shall greatly miss her. 
first time I met her was when we were, it's through reading her articles and of course she would give you advice that you could use. It was advice that targeted the average Ugandan woman. It wasn't for those who are so far up there and not for, you know. So it's, there, there were tips that you could use right away. And then when I started working in New Vision, I met her in person. But then she had this warm personality that welcomed, she welcomed anyone and everyone, regardless of who you are, regardless of what your position was in the company, she welcomed everyone. And, but I developed a, pass, a, a closer relationship with her when I started working with her on, a, when a, working with her on her vision working on her because I was the editor then so receiving her stories but in initially it was generally a work relationship I say please file the stories when am I expecting the stories but with time the more I interacted with her should you know say giving a lot more tips you know she would give me mentoring tips so she was a good mentor she would mentor you fashion about fashion, she would mentor you about uh, your career, she would mentor you about your life, she would talk to you about your spiritual life. And of course she was very humorous. You know, she was very humorous. She, she would tell you something, but not, and, and you know, she would keep like a straight face when she's telling you something, and then you break, and then she bursts out laughing and you're like, wow. She not only wrote about fashion, but even her sense of fashion was on point. She, she lived what she preached. If you didn't get the tips that she had written, at least you'd see her leaving them out. I definitely will miss her a lot. Of course, her passing came as a shock. Still, it's, it's not yet sunk in properly. But yes, I miss her a lot. Miss, miss the warm person that she was. I met her in 1994, I think it was 1994, around there, when she'd just come back from abroad. She'd studied social work in Britain, and she came in at a time when HIV AIDS had just hit the country. But one thing which made her stand, aside, stand out, even with the very, very first story she submitted, was her storytelling ability. At the features desk then, we wanted people who could tell a story and make you see, hear, sense what they're, they're seeing and what they're hearing and what they're sensing, who would take you to the scene. And she had that storytelling ability. It was impossible to be around Ketura and be bored. She, she was always full of laughter and full of jokes. So much that even on the last day I saw her, which was Monday this week in hospital, we spent half of the time laughing. She told me that, uh, hmm, Barbara, I have been moving around the world. I, I was invited by the queen of, of uh, the queen to Birmingham Palace. I had tea with her and she invited me over for the wedding, um, for the royal wedding, Harry and Meghan. And I said, and she said, will you please come? And I said, of course I'll come. So we laughed and then she said, now I'm thinking about the shoes and the dress I'm going to wear, the right color and everything. So we laughed a lot about it. It wasn't, it wasn't a true thing. It's something that she was just imagining in her mind. But that was Ketura. She had all these images in her mind. She also had a very large heart. She had a very large heart. For, for anybody who got to know her so closely, it didn't matter what station of life you were at, whether high up there in society or down, Ketura made you feel important. She made you feel so, so important. Many of her friends, even at the New Vision, are people you wouldn't expect. She's one person who had such a big heart. At Christmas, she gave out gifts, and her gifts were not to her friends. Her gifts were to people you didn't expect her to mingle with, whether it was a cleaner. 
but she was also very loving to us her friends because apart from being her supervisor for many years, she turned up to be my friend. She became such a close friend. We talked about so much. She was my confidant. Um, when you're a boss, it's very difficult to have close friends because every th everybody thinks that you're okay. But with Ketura, there was no pretense about her. She saw you and she immediately knew that you're not doing well and she wanted to know what is happening. Ketura loved Jesus so, so much. She's one person who prayed. She prayed about everything and she prayed to detail. Just like she wrote to detail and just like she conversed to detail, she prayed to detail. That is probably a part of her that the rest of the public may never have known, but to her friends and to the people who interacted with her daily, they knew how much she prayed. The other bit which many people don't know about Ketura, she, she, certainly people know her design, her design bit, but she was also a very good cook, one of the best cooks I have seen. If she invited you over to her house, she actually did the cooking herself. And one thing which she taught me is to love life, to love life and to live my life to the full. It's so painful saying bye to such a friend. But I also know that she loved beautiful things and heaven is very beautiful. I'm sure she's already going around with Jesus and she's being showing her mansion and I'm sure that Jesus has taken care of those details and made sure that her mansion is very beautiful because I know she wouldn't take anything else. She really loved beauty. Ketura has brought the magazine's section a long way, especially the Bride and Groom magazine and the Flair magazine. When we began the Bride and Groom magazines many years ago, they were small and not very well produced. But she's grown those products until they've become household names. And she's influenced the different fashions and the different things she highlighted. But I think one thing which will remain in my mind was the first bride and, and groom expo that we did. For some reason, everybody believed it, it wouldn't work except her. It is so pleasing to know that she's left a mark on our fashion industry with that bride and groom expo. And we shall miss her greatly for that. But I also know that she's worked with a team. She's trained many people. She's trained many fashion writers. She's trained many editors. She's worked closely with so many editors. And I know that those products will continue to grow strong. I know that team will try to do them even better. And they need to do that so that, and they, should, they, should, they, they ought to do that because that's what she would expect. She wouldn't expect that her magazines would die after her. She would expect that they would go on. She was never a selfish person. She was a very good coach. She was a very good trainer. So I'm sure the teams will be up to, up to, up to the beat to make sure that they continue. I think we shall miss her at Vision Group. We shall miss her touch. For many years, she's written her Tuesday column. This is what her family members talk about her. She has been my mentor. She has been my best friend. Really, see, I'm going to miss her a lot. In my heart. I didn't expect her to go very soon. When the getting the better. On Tuesday I was with her and we were talking about how we are going to celebrate Christmas together. And we were very happy and she knew she would get out of hospital by Friday. Even yesterday I talked to her at 1.30 before she passed on and she was very okay, just with a few pains, but she was very okay. So I was very shocked.
for my mother to go very soon like that she would dance she would tell me jokes she was just starting to bond with her grandson one grandson so far Aaron and she loved him so much we first to, we took her to hospital on Saturday Saturday in the afternoon we first went to the clinic she wasn't breathing properly we had diagnosed her with pneumonia so when we took her to the hospital she they they immediately told us that they were going to admit us so an ambulance came and took her to IHK where she has been until yesterday but even when she was on oxygen she was so jolly she would tell jokes she told us how she traveled the world in these few days how she met the Queen of England just in her dreams and she just used to make us laugh you would, you would even forget that she's sick you would just keep on laughing when you go to see her and, and the way she used to make the jokes so her passing on was really a shock it is still a shock to me sometimes I think I'm dreaming that my mother is gone I will miss her very much Sina She's somebody I can say was larger than life. Yali mukwano gwange nyo nyo nyo. Abawaka nga bachimanyi nabo ku mulimu nga bachimanyi. Abamu nga babatsanga nga togera wamba gamba eh hey, does the family want to plan a coup <laughs> ku mulimu. We were very close. She's very special. Aba de free, aba de free nyo kufe nange nga nga insani no nga yeta tafa yo ate she was so friendly nga muntu mukaka mu ayagala nyo ku jokinga kuva rina mula ba the first day kubanga nze nga tuche datinga no no na soko mula bila ku bride and groom ne ba muntu ono namu namu nanyi introducing ga yo Nenga yali so welcoming ningamba eh na yina mulina rinsu ngamba ha na meeting antya ono mchala gwe mpulira buli jugu likasera na yinga wena mtu kakunga ali so free era bwa ati kutuba denga tusobola kutubanga tuli fenanga tusaka kugamba ono chi ono nazara wono kubanga abadde ayagala zihaga mu central muno bo bo meeting ayo inlo abantu bagamba eh ogenda ku meeting na nazara na yinga nazara wanga abadde ji waka Last month, we birthday of the 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 birthday nga kuti ebifa ebimulibye nga ye kubisa bu selfie nga gamba ah chiri okay nze mponyi era nga tumugamba eh kati we are going to have our best christmas kubanga tutugenda genda mu chale wafe tujja ku celebrate nga christmas nawe nga gamba it's very okay i'm well prepared it's it's a tough moment right now but we are just accepting it we have we are yet actually to accept because it's like she's still around we have not yet believed we are trying to believe so ndoza binji bya kuogera ku mama di eya mama di mkama mwechi umule chirunji from the comments of various people it is obvious kamgaso's life has in a way touched many people friends relatives and colleagues will be heading to chen jojo for burial on sandy may her soul rest in everlasting peace for one so low and